Thank you. Thank you, Susie and David and <laughs> Sandy and John and Ron and Faith Rivera and whoever the other person was that wrote that song. Thank you for reminding us to stand up. Stand up and be counted. Everybody take a deep breath and we're going to do our treatment for freedom together aloud. I speak my word for myself, my center, and all its members and friends. I know love as the only reality. I am created out of love. Love is what I am. I know this love as absolute freedom in every area of my life, the life of my center, and all who call it home. I know our center's mortgages are paid in full, and I claim for all of us financial freedom with all debts paid and clear. I release any sense of struggle or wrongdoing. I live in an abundant universe where there is more than enough for all. We experience freedom in every moment by always having more than enough money, vibrant health, and loving relationships. We are who we have come here to be. With hearts open wide, we see the world through the eyes of love. We are blessed, we are rich, and we are free. And so it is. And we use our points of power. I always pay attention. I always go. A, new, a whole new system here. Let's do it the way we know it. I always pay attention. I always tell the truth and tell it quickly. I always ask for what I want when I want it. I always take total responsibility for my experience. I always keep my agreements. And so it is. <laughs> Okay, so we've gobbled up a uh, firewalk slide so far this morning, and we've rearranged our points of power. My guess is by next week it'll have sorted itself out. <laughs> the father factor. Today is Father's Day, and I do want to acknowledge people who carry that energy. That energy of, it's different being a father than being a mother. They're not the same. And when we talk about there's only love, and God is love, and everything is perfect, it kind of leans towards the mother, that mother energy. We do that a lot in Monday night class where I put you under in this guided meditation and then read these words of Ernest Holmes out of this thing called you that say, you're perfect, you're precious, you are whole and complete just the way you are. You are loved. That's the mother. The father factor is a little bit different. It's different being a father than it is being a mother, at least energetically. And I know there are some very wonderful uh, fathers who can embody both of those energies, just as there are wonderful mothers who can embody both of those energies, but on a not physical level, the energies are very different. So on a personality level, Thank you for all the fathers. I love seeing Rick and Kiyoki and Ethan. You know, thank you for carrying that generation of love and clarity and consciousness and all the fathers that are here. Thank you for the best of our fathers. And I choose to always look at that. I find it very helpful in life to look at the best in everyone. Thank you for the strength that father brings. And so if you've got a, a father in your life or a grandfather that you really love and that filled you, take a moment and be grateful for them. And if you didn't, just let it go. And if you are that father, think about the good things that you do. I know so many times as a parent, we don't look at the best of us. We look at that one little thing that we did and we worry that it's going to screw them all up. Don't worry, there are plenty of therapists for children to grow up and see that will help them work through all of that. 
but on a, a non-physical energy, on an energetic plane as an archetype. Father, to me, is very, very important because it calls to us to rise up, to stand, not to fall down, but to get up. It calls to us to stand tall and to go beyond the limitations that we thought we had. It calls to us to dig deep into ourselves and find that which we didn't know we had. And to me, that is so much science of mind that says you are the one that is creating your world. You are the captain of your ship. You determine your destiny. You have manifested this reality, and it is up to you to find that within you to triumph over your self-imposed limitation. It's not anybody outside of you. It's only you. And so in honor of Father's Day, I want to read you a poem. If you want to, you can close your eyes and take a breath. This is by D. Groberg. It's called The Race. Whenever I start to hang my head in front of failure's face, my downward fall is broken by the memory of a race. A children's race, young boys, young men, how I remember well. Excitement, sure but also fear, it wasn't hard to tell. They all lined up so full of hope, each thought to win that race, or tie for first, or if not that, at least take second place. Their parents watched from off the side, each cheering for their son, and each boy hoped to show his folks that he would be the one. The whistle blew and off they flew like chariots of fire, to win, to be the hero there, was each young boy's desire. One boy in particular whose dad was in the crowd was running in the lead and thought, my dad will be so proud. But as he speeded down the field and crossed a shallow dip, the little boy who thought he'd win lost his step and slipped. Trying hard to catch himself, his arms flew every place. Amidst the laughter of the crowd, he fell flat on his face. As he fell, his hope fell too. He couldn't win it now. Humiliated, he just wished to disappear somehow. But as he fell, his dad stood up and showed his anxious face, which to the boy so clearly said, get up and win that race. He quickly rose, no damage done, behind a bit, that's all, and ran with all his might and make to make up for his fall. So anxious to restore himself, to catch up and to win, his mind went faster than his legs. He slipped and fell again. He wished that he had quit before with only one disgrace. I'm hopeless as a runner now. I shouldn't try to race. But through the laughing crowd he searched and found his father's face with a steady look that said again, get up and win that race. So he jumped up to try again 10 yards behind the last. If I'm going to gain those yards, he thought, I've got to run real fast. Exceeding everything he had, he regained eight, then ten, but trying hard to catch the lead, he slipped and fell again. Defeat. He lay there silent, silently, a tear dropped from his eye. There's no sense running anymore. Three strikes, I'm out. Why try? I've lost, so what's the use, he thought. I'll live with my disgrace. But then he thought about his dad, who soon he'd have to face. Get up, an echo sounded low. You haven't lost at all. For all you have to do to win is rise each time you fall. Get up, the echo urged him on. Get up and take your place. You are not meant for failure here. Get up and win that race. So up he rose to run once more, refusing to forfeit. 
and he resolved that win or lose, at least he wouldn't quit. So far behind the others now, the most he'd ever been, still he gave it all he had and ran like he could win. Three times he'd fallen stumbling, three times he rose again, too far behind to hope to win. He still ran to the end. They cheered another boy who crossed the line and won first place, head high and proud and happy, no falling, no disgrace. But when the fallen youngster crossed the line in last place, the crowd gave him a greater cheer for finishing the race. And even though he came in last with head bowed low, unproud, you would have thought he'd won the race to listen to that crowd. And to his dad, he sadly said, I didn't do so well. To me, you won, his father said. You rose each time you fell. And now when things seem dark and bleak and difficult to face, the memory of that little boy helps me in my own race. For all of life is like that race with ups and downs and all. And all you have to do to win is rise each time you fall. And when depression and despair shout loudly in my face, another voice within me says, get up and win that race. Get up and win that race. To me, that is the epitome of the father energy that says you are not meant for disgrace. I don't care how many times you've fallen down. I don't care what the crowds are laughing at you about. Your place is to rise up and take the place that you are meant to have in life. I love this teaching because it says, get up, get up. You're not meant to have your face in the sand. We do not grab, grovel in the dirt. We stand strong as powerful, creative, spiritual beings alive and well on planet Earth. We have what it takes to live the life that we are meant to live. But we have to get up. We have to get moving again. We have to get our perspective. We have to keep our eye on what we want and how we want to be. And then we give it all we've got. And sometimes it looks like everything is going smoothly. And sometimes it looks like things are going down. And that's the time for us to get up and to win that race. So I want to talk about Orlando. I don't want to talk about Orlando, let me be honest. I don't want to talk about Orlando. When I heard about Orlando last Sunday afternoon, I sat in my car and cried at the immediacy of our ability to turn on each other. And through it all, I've heard a lot of different takes on it. I've seen a lot of the stories about the people who chose to be there. And I always have to come back to we were never born and we cannot die. No one can take our life from us. I believe that we choose the exact second that we are born. I believe that we choose the exact second that we step out of this earth plane. And what we do between makes all the difference. And so when I look at what we do to each other, it calls me to a higher view that says that we are God beings alive and well on planet Earth. That we are beings of light and we are beings of love. And that we get up to win this race. Some people are not going to like this and I have debated whether or not to say it. But I will not call what happened in Orlando a tragedy. I believe it's a victory. I believe that there are those brave souls who chose to be there at that moment and to transition out of this world in such a way as to make a statement that needs to be made, to bring up in our collective consciousness the conversation that says we are all created equal. In science of mind, we are all points of light of the divine. 
We are all perfect, whole, and complete exactly the way that we are. To bring up our shadow thoughts that say any one of us is better than anyone else or any one else of us is less than anyone else. To bring it up so that we can rise up once again and look at each other and say we are all welcome, that we all have an inalienable, cannot take it away, right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in whatever way we choose to pursue that happiness. It reminds me of the shootings in Paris where the next night all of the Parisians came out, I think it was into the Champs Elysees, and they gathered, they gathered, they packed in there, and they held signs that said, we are not afraid. We are not afraid and we will not be afraid because of this. Don't tell me that you're not safe. Your safety comes from within you. You are manifesting your world. Don't tell me that you're afraid because that dishonors those people who transitioned in Orlando. Stand up and take a stand for us being in love, being at peace, being powerful beings of light and love, and everyone is welcome. If we have to do the whole civil rights movement all over again, then that's what we will do, because obviously we didn't do it right the first time. We are God's own. And it is times like this where I believe that energy of the father factor helps us rise above. We come from tough stock. We as a country have stood in the line of fire for freedom for hundreds of years. We as a country have joined together to fight tyranny and bigotry and prejudice and to say that freedom is our birthright to live the life that we want to live. And so I see those brave men and women marching, looking the same in their uniforms and transitioning through that process. And then I see the people in Orlando not looking the same, not marching. They danced out of this life. They were dancing, they were laughing, they were singing, they were loving, they were in their joy and out they went. And I guarantee you, they are still singing, they are still dancing, they are still loving on the other side. The conversation is ours. Do not fall down in front of this. Do not feel like, oh, all is lost, all is not lost, all is up for the grabbing. Yes. And it is ours yeah. to grab. It is ours to get up. If we are in the mud, get up. Mm. Win that race, the race that says, God is manifest in each and every one of us. We are perfect, whole, and complete in every way. Do what you want to do. Live the life you want to live. It's great. It's all spirit in form. Don't falter yes. because of the enormity of the moment. Yeah. And do not yeah. sacrifice two people, even on special occasions. And I'm going to give it, this is a special occasion, but it's a special occasion to rise up. If not now, when? And if not you, who? This is a statement that says it's time to love deeper than we've ever loved. To be out there more than we have ever been out there, each and every one of us, is the way that God made us. Each and every one of us is our own unique individualization of spirit. We are colorful, we are loud, we are beautiful, and we are different. And it is our difference that is to be celebrate oneness. Celebrating oneness does not mean sameness. Nobody wants to be the same. We all want to be who we are. So, open your hearts. Don't be afraid. Be how you want to be. Kiss in public. Hold hands. Love each other. Live the life that you were meant to live. Because you are creating your reality. You are creating it not only by your internal experience, but by the outward molecules that we assemble to come into alignment. This country, this world is changing. We are growing, and sometimes growth isn't pretty, and sometimes it's not comfortable. But that is the time to dig deep inside of us and say, I have what it takes. 
I'm here on planet Earth in 2016 in a time when we are opening to valuing people at a greater level than we ever have before, to lifting each other up at a higher level than we ever have before. I don't want to hear it that it's too much for us. I don't want us to fall down and say, oh no, I need a nap. No, we don't. We need to get up and win the race, and so it 